Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. You know, moments of maximum crisis can also be maximally clarifying. And many things are clear in the wake of the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died on Friday night. Perhaps what has come most into focus is the nature of the bargain that the institutional Republican Party has struck with Donald Trump. You know, more or less everyone in the party understood from the beginning who Donald Trump was, that he was completely unfit for the presidency and would represent a possibly mortal peril to the nation if elected. They said as much over and over. I'll tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. The man ca cannot tell the truth, but he combines it with being a narcissist. A narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. I'm not going to try to get into the mind of Donald Trump because I don't think there's a whole lot of space there. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. What do you think a Trump government would look like, Senator? It would be chaos. He is wholly unprepared to be president of the United States. There is no way we are going to allow a con artist to take over the conservative movement, and Donald Trump is a con artist. I mean, he got that part wrong. They did allow it, but everything else was right there. I mean, all the diagnoses there, like he's a pathological liar and a narcissist and incompetent and in over his head, and it would be chaos if he governed. I mean, they got it right. They knew. They were very clear. The man should not get anywhere near the levers of power. But once he won the nomination for the entire party, the electeds and the donors and the lobbyists and the staffers and all the like, they came to see that the danger was worth it because they would get to wield power. They would get the things that they wanted, a huge tax cut for corporations and rich people and deregulations and judges, 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 judges. That was the bargain. And Donald Trump, which is rare for Donald Trump, has actually delivered on all of it. And so for the Institutional Republican Party and the Marco Rubios and the Ted Cruz's and the Lindsey Graham's and the lobbyists on K Street and all of their staffers and all the donors, the bargain worked. But the worst case scenario also happened. Donald Trump, this person who is obviously unfit for the job in precisely the way they identified, encountered a crisis he was unable to manage, an epochal crisis that he could not and would not solve. We have now lost 200,000 Americans. The president, narcissist that he is, has not even mentioned it yet. And it's not just that he isn't capable of dealing with this crisis. He has actively made things worse. He has sabotaged efforts to manage the crisis at every turn. He has encouraged people to do dangerous things like open up bars and go to his indoor rallies and not wear masks. And those messages sink in. This is what happened today in Ohio at a Trump rally. Ohio's lieutenant governor had the nerve to suggest Trump fans wear masks. But if you go into a grocery store where you got to wear one, all right, Hang on, hang on, just listen up. Just listen up. All right, I get it. But if somebody tells you to, t to take it off, you can at least say that you're trying to save the country by wearing one of President Donald Trump's masks, all right? All right. He's trying to, they're, they're Trump masks. He wants to sell them on Trump masks, and they're going, boo, no, 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 we don't want the masks. Donald Trump has lied to the American people about how deadly and contagious the virus is. He has essentially destroyed the credibility of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's been around for more than 70 years, one of the most celebrated public health agencies in the world, and Donald Trump has broken it by interfering time and again, putting politics over science. Just today, the CDC retracted new guidance that had been quietly posted on Friday, an apparent change in its position on how easily the coronavirus can spread from person to person on small droplets in the air. Federal health officials said the posting Friday was a mistake put out before full editing and clearance was completed. What are we to believe? Donald Trump has taken action after action that have needlessly cost more Americans their lives. And it didn't have to be this way. If we had the same death toll per million as Canada, our neighbors, very similar nation in many ways, over 100,000 more Americans would be around and walking around today and hugging their loved ones. 
And the crisis continues right now. Tens of thousands of people are hospitalized. Millions upon millions of kids are not in their classrooms. Businesses are closings every day. Things are worse than most people could have imagined they might get back in 2016 when they were talking about Donald Trump being a narcissist and pathological liar. And yet, and yet, and yet, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death and Mitch McConnell and the institutional right whirring into motion to replace her, the horrifying truth is this, that for the institutional Republican Party, for everyone who made their peace with the bargain, the bargain was still worth it. Still is now. They traded over 100,000 American lives for this power. That's the price we have paid for this bargain. And if it took 100,000 more American lives for them to keep it up, I don't think they would have many regrets. It is precisely because the Republican Party has tethered itself to such a manifestly horrible and incompetent person who has been unpopular from the beginning. They now understand the only way they could continue to rule is through increasingly aggressive power grabs. They are not just falling in line on the bargain. Now they're doing whatever it takes to retain the minority power, like continuing to stoke the most dangerous authoritarian impulses of their base. Like Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler running for re-election, releasing an ad today that jokes about murdering journalists. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis introducing legislation today that he backs that would waive liability for running over protesters. And so, for the sake of democracy and for the country and for those lives we've let yet to lose that we might still save, to preserve the American democratic experiment, the opponents of this sick minoritarian project have to fight like hell.